Hello and welcome back to my channel and to this next video. Now we know what KNX is and this video is all about the different devices that are available for KNX. And after the intro we will see how we can group those KNX devices. KNX components can be divided into three larger groups. First of all, there are the sensors. The sensors convert physical informations, like the information of switching a push button or the temperature, into digital KNX telegrams. Then the complete opposite of a sensor are the actuators. The actuators are there to perform actions, therefore the name actuator. So they convert the digital KNX telegram into a physical action, like switching the light, dimming the light, or moving a blind, for example. And then, last but not least, there are the system components. And system components are partially required for a proper operation of a KNX network, like the power supply. It should be noted that not all KNX devices can be sorted into exactly one of those three groups, because there might be devices that fit into two or even three of these groups. So for example, there are blind actuators that also have two binary inputs, which you can connect to window contacts or conventional push buttons. But first, let's take a closer look at the KNX sensors. As already mentioned, they are for data acquisition. That means that they get physical informations and convert them into digital KNX telegrams. In my hands I hold such a typical sensor. This is a push button sensor with four buttons on each side. But there might also be push button sensors with displays inside of it where you can show feedback objects to the user. Another big group of the sensors are the so-called binary inputs. With binary inputs you are capable of converting normal switching signals or conventional push buttons into KNX telegrams. So you hook up for example a window contact to such a binary input and then this binary input converts this switching signal into a KNX telegram and the same for conventional push buttons. And the last bigger group of sensors are the physical sensors. So to these I count sensors such as temperature sensors, weather stations or for example humidity sensors for fan control. So you can see there are a lot of different sensors and again the same thing counts as before. A sensor might fit into multiple groups. So for example a push button sensor can also have a temperature sensor inside of it which you can use for your heating control. Now that we know the sensors we also need to know their counterpart, the so-called actuators. With actuators we are able to convert those digital KNX telegrams into physical actions. And depending on the action that you want to perform there are different actuators. So for example with such a switching actuator you are able to switch lights or devices on and off. And if you want to dim your lights well then you need a dimming actuator like this one. And there are other actuators for specific applications like heating actuators and blind actuators. It is also important that you read the technical informations of those actuators so that the functions you need are supported by those devices and that you also know informations like maximum switching capacity, minimum load for dimming actuators, etc. For a decentralized installation there are also flush mounted versions of those actuators which you then can install not inside the distribution cabinet but inside the installation box. Last but not least there are the KNX system components. They are partially required for the proper installation of your KNX network. Such a device would be for example the power supply. The KNX power supply supplies the bus with a voltage of 30 volt DC. 
and it is important that you don't use a normal 30 volt transformer because inside of such a KNX power supply there is a throttle installed. And this throttle is necessary because the KNX devices communicate on the same wire pair they are also supplied with power. Well, this is the red and black wire of your KNX cable. And therefore, you only need those two wires at the KNX devices itself. Well, sometimes you also need an additional power supply. This is, for example, the case for weather stations or visualization panels. But then, typically, a KNX power supply also has a secondary output without a throttle, which you could use for such a purpose. And then you would use the other pair, the yellow and white wire pair of the KNX cable. Other components that belong to the KNX system components are for example line and area couplers like this one. You can already see they have two KNX clamps. Why they have it we will see in the video about the topology. But they also count to those system components. Another system component is for example a USB or IP interface which you use to connect the EDS6 to your KNX installation. And then there are also gateways which you can use to implement subsystems like Philips Hue, DALI, Modbus, etc. to your KNX network. So now we got to know the KNX devices. Let us quickly summarize. There are sensors which convert physical information into KNX telegrams. The counterpart are the actuators. They convert those digital telegrams into physical actions like switching, dimming or moving blinds. And then there are the system components which are partially required for the proper installation like for example the KNX power supply or line and area couplers. I hope you enjoyed the video. If so, consider a like and subscribe to the channel to get notified for new videos. If you have any questions left or video suggestions, leave them down in the comments below. In the next video we want to take a look at the physical installation of an KNX network. So see you there.